Hello everyone. Today is Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. My name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist here with the National Weather Service located in Salt Lake City, Utah. And this is the May version of the Utah Water Outlook. So what do you say we get into it? And we'll start looking at precip from October through March. And what you see are cooler colors dominating Utah's picture. And that indicates above average precipitation with some areas 150 to 200 percent down south. But the farther north you get, the numbers diminish. And when I say that, it's still in really good shape, 130 to 150 percent. And then the, the northern Wasatch is about 110 to 130 percent. So excellent numbers all the way around as far as October through March. And then you look at May. For the first week of May, that purple color indicates really an absence of any kind of precipitation for the most part. And and you you would typically think this is a bad thing because uh, we, we've been dominated by low snowpacks recently with drying out in the spring. But we could use this right now. We can use an absence of snow due to we want to melt off some of this really large snowpack and alleviate any flood threat that we see. So now we'll look at temperatures, and we look at May's temperature anomaly. Again, cooler colors in the green, and a lot of this is roughly 5 to 7 degrees cooler than average during May. And, and this is quite helpful uh, that we're not heating up all at once really fast. And, and if you look at parts of April, the end of April, we were warmer than average and then we got cold and then we were warmer than average and then we got cold and what that does it it interrupts that 24-hour melt cycle so you can't get a lot of flow coming out of the mountains may has been dry but it's also been cool we're still melting off in an orderly fashion it's it's a good thing so when we look at snowpack uh, these graphs are an average of all the snow measuring station in each particular basin Snow water equivalent is on the y-axis, time is on the x. Uh, the navy blue color is our current year of 2019. The teal is 2005 and 2011 is the red. And the reason I, I put 2005 and 2011, these are two big years that we've had in the past and it compares to where we are now. And what you see is uh, we're melting off at a really good clip. Uh, as of mid-April, about the third week of April. We were about two weeks delayed, maybe three weeks, and now we've started the melt process in earnest, and it's it's doing a really nice thing. We need to get some of that snow out of the mountains and into the reservoirs. Uh, when you look at the Weber Basin, 127%, and also dropping off. And when you look at the melt rates, you want about an inch to an inch and a half per day. That gives us about bank full. You don't want to go into two inches per day or above because then you have flood scenarios. The three-day melt rate for this graph is 0.8 inches per day. It's it's really optimum. Maybe a little more would be okay. If you look at six creeks, we're in 128 percent with about eight tenths of an inch per day melt rates. Still, we could bump that up a little bit more, but um, we'll take it. Utah Lake uh, right now at 195 percent of average, but you can see the graph is dropping quite quickly, meaning we're melting off a large volume of this uh, into the reservoirs. And currently we're melting at it's 0.6 inches per day. It's been a little chillier, and that's what slows down this melt rate. Duchesne at 179%. And then you look at melt rates of about 0.3 inches per day. And you can see that little bump that we had in the Duchesne added to the snowpack. We had some snow, but we're on the downward trend. And as far as water supply, for May 2019, this is what you see, and these are the volume of this is the volume of water that is anticipated to come out of the mountains from April 1st through the end of July. And since we've already uh, gone through five weeks of this, the forecast is getting much more accurate because we don't have as far out to forecast. And this is the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center. Uh, part of the National Weather Service. We're all in a big room here. Uh, but you can see the numbers are quite impressive down in the Virgin at 155 percent, the Severe at 150, and you see Central Utah at about 160. And then you move farther up, the Green is at 100 percent, just bang on average at the Bear at 115. So due to some of those atmospheric events that came through on uh, the latter part of the winter uh, that moved, you know, the, they used to call it the Pineapple Express. Uh, southern Utah, parts of California, those areas did much better. And there was maybe about five, six of these events that came through. But you can see how potent they are. When you look at the peak flow forecast, let me kind of explain a little bit here. 
this is a little busy so I'll go through the piece by piece this is the maximum for the Logan River that's been um, instantaneous peak this is how high the river's gonna get and it's this um, was was the biggest max uh, was back in 1986 at 1870 CFS so that's the that's like the biggest peak we've ever seen and this what we're talking about is how high is the river gonna get and is it gonna flood this is the bank full Oh, actually, I'm sorry, that was flood. This is the bank full. And we talk about flood, we talk about damaging structure, infrastructure, bridges, roads, uh, structures. When it gets out of bank full, it can run through the woods, run around the fields. We're not going to issue a flood warning for that for the most part if it's smaller. When you look at this figure here, uh, this is the range of possibilities that uh, the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center forecasts. So that green shading indicates that square in the middle that I'm pointing at. That is the most probable that it's going to get to, maybe 1,200 CFS. Remember, flood is about 1,600 CFS. And we're talking about CFS. It's cubic feet per second. So a cubic foot's about the size of a basketball moving past you every second is one CFS. This river typically sees somewhere around 1,000 to 1,200 CFS. We're going to hit most likely a right or in that range. We don't anticipate getting up to 1,600 CFS. And then this is the observed we've had so far. So you can see we really haven't had big peak flows. Maybe it, it got up to about 600 CFS for a brief period. But this gives you an idea of where the range is we expect and then where the critical values are. So we'll kind of roll through this now. When you look at the Weber, and this is the Weber near Oakley, up near the town of Oakley, you can see the flood is about 3,200 CFS. And what we see is most likely we're going to be around 1,800 CFS here on the Weber. On the Provo, what you see is roughly about 1,800 CFS. And this was a little higher back in mid-April when storms were still going big. We had a 10% chance of maybe reaching 2700 CFS uh, and and you know that was getting up kind of close to some of the bigger numbers we've seen but most likely we're going to stay down in the range of about 1800 CFS don't anticipate anything 800 CFS is flood on Little Cottonwood and we're anticipating a getting up around 400 and that's of today theoretically if, if it started snowing again and then it got really cold and then sometime in June it got really hot this could change but that's unlikely and that's why you see a range of possibilities if that happens maybe we get to 600 CFS but unlikely most likely we're gonna stay well within our range on the Duchesne and this is the headwaters near the town of Tabiona uh, flood is about 2700 CFS we're uh, most likely gonna be around 1200 CFS so when you think of drought this is what it looked like March 12th with uh, Utah being about abnormally dry and then we went to April 2nd and it got even better with only a small area of abnormally dry and this is the US drought monitor I'm getting this from and then April 30th ta-da we are absent of any drought categories in Utah as we speak which is great because we had some of the biggest drought designations last fall on the southeast part of the state and that's all gone so that's quite good news so if you need anything else there's my contact info there's my phone number there's my email um, it's a good water year looks like we're gonna alleviate any flood threat but we have really big volumes and most likely we're going to fill the majority of the reservoirs with the exception of the really quite large ones like Bear Lake and Lake Paul so all good stuff we'll go from there and if it changes I'll send down another one but I think that's where we are thanks for taking the time to listen to this we'll see you